Okay, so it should be recording. Thank you everyone for coming. Um, this is uh, hosted by the East Asian Working Group of the Young Scholars Initiative as part of the UN at the Crossroads, Past Developments and Future Trends. Today we have Professor Nan Li with us. Professor Nan Li is an Associate Professor in Anti College of Economics and Management at Shanghai Jiao Tong University. Professor Li is going to talk about digital RMB and what is digital RMB. Okay, hi. Hello, everyone. Um, this is my great pleasure to talk at the uh, YSI seminar series. So today I'm going to um, talk about what is digital RMB. And uh, before we talk about what is digital RMB or in more in general, what is digital currency, let me first give you a very uh, very brief history of the money. So the money uh, start with this function of to facilitate the exchange of the goods. And uh, the first uh, type of the money we call is the commodity money. And uh, aside from the gold and silver, actually all of these goods are uh, at one point of time in the history has been used as money or as the medium of exchange. And then later on, uh, the commodity money uh, mainly, for, uh, mainly is in form of either gold or silver due to the nature of these two commodities, uh, namely high in value, uh, it has also this scarcity, and then it is easy to divide and easy to uh, carry, and uh, uh, it is uh, 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 high in value. So uh, any kind of the um, commodities that can be served as the medium of exchange should satisfy this, uh, uh, this kind of the properties. And then later on with the development of the economy, when the exchange, the demand for the exchange has been growing, uh, people find out it is very difficult to uh, carry on a lot of uh, the gold. Even it is high in value, it is easy to carry, but suppose you need to carry a bunk of the gold uh, from one place to another, it has been very troublesome. So uh, along with the economic growth, um, this paper money has been invented. And the first paper money ever showed uh, in the world is in actually in China, in Song Dynasty. This is called the Jiaozi. So with this piece of the paper, you can convert it uh, to the commodity money uh, with equivalent value that is written on this piece of paper. Okay, so it is not very clear on this one, but if you can read Chinese, it is actually tells you how much you can you can uh, convert this piece of paper to the commodity money in gold or silver in China. Okay, so this is paper money and the value of the paper money is guaranteed by the uh, commodity money that it, it can, can be converted to. And then later on, starting from 1970, 71, when the president of uh, US, uh, Nixon discontinued, uh, declared that uh, uh, the US will discontinue uh, the converting US dollars into the gold at this fixed price of 35 US dollars per ounce. This is the, stop of this uh, um, so-called Bretton Wood system. And then at, from that time on, the paper money or these coins has no connection with any commodity and it becomes the fiat money. So what guarantee the value of the fiat money? It is actually the Soviet credit or the uh, credit of the country who are issuing this uh, uh, money. Uh, so uh, the US dollar, value of the US dollar is guaranteed, uh, guaranteed by the government of the US. Well, the RMB's value is guaranteed by the uh, country behind RMB, which is China. And then later on, uh, starting from the uh, internet area, we have seen this digital currency, but uh, digital currency is not the same as uh, what I call here digital fiat currency. Uh, digital currency, uh, digital Fiat currency, to my point of view, should be the central bank uh, digital currency, which is issued by the central bank. It has a, a, a dramatic difference where it is totally different from the uh, other digital currency like Bitcoin or the dime uh, and other type of the decentralized uh, um, digital currency. Okay, so what we are going to talk about today is actually the digital RMB, which is uh, the central bank uh, digital currency that are issued by China. And, uh, and this 
the aim of introducing this uh, digital RMB in China is trying to um, is trying to replace these physical bills and coins in the circulation uh, in China. So the aim is to introduce this digital currency alongside the uh, China's current fiat money RMB. And it is designed to scale the number of transactions made every day across the country. So the, um, we have been started this uh, research on the central bank DBC, uh, on the central bank digital currency or CBDC starting in 2014. And then in 2016, by the end of the 16, um, PBC has set up a digital currency research institute. And this research institute start uh, this uh, uh, extensive research on the CBDC, and uh, up till now they have obtained, along with three, uh, along with two other research institutes, uh, they have obtained uh, about a hundred patents in terms of the digital currency and the central bank digital currency. And then uh, early. Last year, in April, uh, China started this internal trial in the closed system of the digital yuan, or we call it e, uh, CN, uh, e yuan. And uh, this is, uh, I have to emphasize, it is internal trial. It is an internal test in the closed system and that uh, were carried out in several of the cities. Okay, So uh, the who are the participants in all of these trials? Uh, actually, it includes uh, the state-owned commercial banks, currently the six big state-owned commercial banks, as well as the third-party payments um, players, including JD, uh, JD Jindong, uh, Alipay, and Tenpay, uh, and uh, other kind of the third-party payment pro providers. And then all of these telecom, uh, the, our three big telecom companies are also uh, in supporting of this uh, um, uh, trials as well as later on. If we are going to carry out uh, the digital uh, RMB, they will also be part of the players. And then uh, Huawei um, start to um, have this uh, support on the mobile phones. So they provide the digital RMB wallet on their um, as a app on their phones, on several of the mod models of the Huawei mo mobile phones. So these are the big participants uh, in the um, test of the uh, China RMB. And then uh, the test was uh, um, uh, carried out in a larger extent uh, in December last year. So through um, by sending out this so-called digital red packet, Shu uh, Zihongbao, in four cities, Shenzhen, Suzhou, uh, Xiongan, and Chengdu. And also it will be implemented in some of the places uh, in this uh, uh, Winter Olympic Games uh, in that is uh, that will be uh, uh, hold uh, that will be held in next year okay and then um, at the early uh, uh, this year in January this um, trial has been um, uh, extended to Beijing and Shanghai and some other country uh, other cities including I, I think up till now we have 12 cities uh, that have um, people in these 12 cities have seen uh, experienced with the digital yuan so this is some of the examples of the digital yuan that showed up in the mobile payment apps. Uh, for example, this is uh, the, this one is um, with the Bank of China. This is um, Agricultural Bank of China. And then this is the ICBC. Uh, and then this is China Construction Banks. Okay. And then we also see that uh, this is a detailed or enlarged uh, digital wallet uh, through the CCB uh, apps. Okay. And as you can see here, this is digital RMB and this is the logo of the CCB. And then uh, this um, picture of the digital RMB is blue for the um, apps in these um, CCB apps. And it can take different colors in different uh, banks' apps. Okay. Well, this is for the communication bank. China Communication Bank, it has a, a hard copy of the card, which embed this uh, uh, digital uh, RMB into this card. And then here it shows what is the balance in your wallet of the digital RMB. And there is another type uh, of the 
way that uh, this trial of the digital MB has been implemented, that is the uh, through the Alipay or through the Tempay, you can scan your QR code to use your to use the digital RMB in your digital RMB wallet to pay for the goods uh, in some of the uh, coffee shops or in some of these uh, small uh, small convenience stores. And then uh, this, there is also this type type of the digital wallet. This is a, a wallet that by the uh, Agricultural Bank of China. So from the, with this, you don't even need to um, uh, carry a, a mobile phone. You can just carry this small gadget, and then you can make the payment. And uh, so that's that's all kinds of the different forms of the digital RMB that currently is in trial. Uh, again, I have to emphasize this is internal trial uh, within a closed system. It it is not still um, not uh, embedded in our um, payment system yet. Okay, so. Before we can talk more about uh, how um, what is the outlook or how um, when the CMB and China uh, digital currency will be implemented uh, in China, let's first look at what are the uh, major characteristics of the e uh, um, CNY or digital RMB. So the first important uh, nature of the um, digital RMB is that. Uh, this is also the important nature, uh, which should be for any central bank digital currency. That is, this is a part of the M0 uh, for any country. It is the currency in circulation, which provide this function of medium of exchange. Okay, so this is a substitute of the physical bills and coins we have been using in making our payment. And it will also um, be a close substitute of all of this uh, payment uh, that you have been um, you have been uh, using in your daily life. In China, a lot of this um, payment actually already been um, digitalized. So uh, we, we can hardly see these uh, uh, people, security guards are carrying a bunk of the cash from the bank branch. So this is a picture that uh, we, I take it from my uh, article, journal article uh, on the uh, Nikkei Asia. And uh, the, main, the major contribution or the uh, uh, good thing about this uh, digital RMB is that it can save us huge cost in terms of printing, maintaining the cash, the physical cash. And uh, we don't have to hire so many security guards. We don't have to maintain uh, those expensive vault for the banks to maintain all of these uh, uh, physical bills and coins. And according to a report by the ECB, the uh, European Central Bank, uh, among if we um, estimate what is the uh, cost, the social cost that, that uh, has to be facilitated, that uh, uh, are incurred in this retail payment in the 27 EU countries. Actually, it is amount. It can amount to 130 billion euro dollars, uh, euros, uh, or one one percent of the GDP of these 27 countries. So this is a huge amount of the benefit that can be saved if um, the central bank digital currency is issued, and uh, uh, China is the leading country in doing uh, or in trying to implement this uh, uh, CBDC, it, we, have, uh, we have several reasons for that. The first reason is that uh, given the, this is the uh, graph that shows how much of the money that is actually in circulation in China. Uh, this is M0 as of uh, uh, 2021. Uh, uh, in February, we have 8.96 trillion yuan in the currency as the currency in circulation, our M0, okay? But uh, we have to be a little bit um, careful. That is uh, the M2, which measures the store value of the uh, function of the money, where it includes both the uh, currency in circulation as well as those money in a saving account of the corporations and the household. Uh, this M2 is much larger, uh, is, is a much larger, is a much larger number, okay? And this is uh, created, this M2 is created through the uh, commercial banking system. And we will talk about that uh, later on. And this is a special function of the commercial banking system who is providing this transmission of the monetary policies uh, in the economy. But uh, what we are focusing now for the digital currency is actually related to the M0, which is the circulation, the currency in circulation. 
However, the actual payment that or the transactions that has been going through every day uh, in our daily life, it, the amount is is much higher. Okay, and this uh, and we have these facilities. Um, uh, it's called the mobile payment uh, development in the past five years. And uh, these graphs shows how rapid is our mobile payment uh, growing in China versus, China versus that of the US. And here, these dark red um, bars are for the US, while these pink bars are for China. So we have been have, have a huge development uh, in the mobile payment starting from 2016, especially uh, through these two systems, Alipay and Tem. Pay. And these are the big two big players in the mobile payment. However, people uh, tend to say that, okay, so these guys are the monopoly of the payment system and the is issuance of the uh, CBDC or the digital RMB is to replace their roles. So let's see whether they are indeed a very, uh, first of all, let's see whether they are indeed the big players in the payment in China. So actually, according to the 2020 payment uh, system report in China, which was published by the PBC, uh, as of 2020, 20, uh, the total amount of the transaction in China amounts to 8,195 trillion RMB, okay? And uh, only 295 trillion RMB was transacted through the third party payment system or the so-called non-banking payment system. And uh, the overall, the total digital payment that is through the commercial banking system uh, amounts to 2,712 trillion RMB. So from this graph, you can see that uh, uh, although if you look at the amount of the transactions or the number of the transactions, the transactions down through the non-banking payment or the third part payment system is a lot, is, is the highest. But uh, all of these transactions in terms of the amount is much smaller as compared with those transaction payments that has been done through uh, going through the uh, banking system uh, uh, payment. Okay, so the the banking system um, <clears throat> payment composed of the following uh, three, uh, four major components. The first one is we call it the large payment system. And it uh, actually helped the transaction uh, of the more than 80% of the total transactions that has, been go uh, that has been done in China. And then we also have this small retail uh, transaction and uh, then the online transaction, uh, online payment system. And the NUCC is the part where we have this non-banking payments. The, the, all of these transactions has, been goes, has, has to go through the NUCC, the Net Union Clearing um, Corporation. So all of these are actually the data are already foresighted by the PPC. It is under the regulation of our central bank. And uh, we also see that uh, it is indeed the growth, uh, the uh, small retail payment system as well as the online payment system has been growing a lot as compared with the uh, large payment system. But uh, uh, we also need to bear in our mind that the large component of the uh, transactions are still done through going through the banking system through this large payment system. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the caveat of this payment system uh, in China. And what we can see here is that uh, the issuance of the digital RMB is mainly helpful in uh, help, helping us to do these daily transactions through the mobile payment system or through the uh, online banking system. And uh, this uh, digital RMB is uh, not a, a, a sort of a, repla a, a, a replacer or is not meant to replace the Alipay or the WeChat Pay. Uh, it is just a, a, a currency that flows into this pay payment system, okay? So let, uh, another uh, common uh, misconception about the digital RMB is that uh, some people argue that uh, the Central Bank of China uh, want to issue this digital RMB in order to um, put a, a huge surveillance on the daily life of the household, um, trying to uh, know where you, you uh, buy a cu cup of coffee and where, uh, where did you go to make all kinds of the transactions. Actually, um, it's, uh, it's not that, uh, it, uh, this is not really true, okay? And we can look at this uh, uh, question uh, in two ways. The first one is that uh, 
Digital RMB has this uh, feature of the so-called double offline, double offline payment feature. That is, uh, with this uh, gadget or uh, with your with this um, digital wallet installed on your mobile phone, you can make the payment uh, up to a certain amount without going without any network. It can be make you, you can make the payment by simply touch these two gadget together, or you 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 uh, get your uh, uh, mobile phone together. We even both of these mobile phone have are in the fly, flying mode, so we don't need the any network to make the payment. This is one important feature of the digital RMB wallet, and this feature is called anonymous with up limit or with limit. This is to serve the needs or the preference for our public of this uh, anonymity. And uh, the, on the other hand, uh, we also need, we also want to, um, uh, uh, we want, uh, want to make sure that uh, we don't, we can, we can still trace this large amount of the illegal transactions or any money not laundering. So the truth of this anonymity with a limit is trying to find a balance between the anonymity that the public ask for and the, uh, the detection, the need to detect money laundering or illegal transactions. Okay, and on the other on the other hand, if you think about this um, payment made through the uh, Alipay or WeChat Pay or through any kind of the mobile um, payment system or uh, online payment system, theoretically it is uh, traceable. It is not a nominee. Uh, it, it, you have you, your your information can be traced to your account. So. This uh, digital RMB wallet actually is the only um, kind of the digitalized uh, payment um, method that can allow this uh, uh, preference of the public to get to obtain this anonymity. So this is one. This is one important feature of the digital RMB. That is, uh, through this uh, double offline payment te technology, you can really achieve uh, to use this digital RMB exactly the way you are using the physical bills on coins, without the other party to know who you are, who you really are. Okay. So this is the first. Uh, this is the second important feature of the digital RMB, and then the. <clears throat> Third important feature of digital RMB is related to the so-called uh, double tier system to implement or to um, um, to supply the digital RMB into our system. And, uh, and there is another com mis uh, common misconfusion to say that uh, um, the implementation of digital RMB is trying to replace the commercial bank uh, system or to uh, will encourage the disintermediation uh, in the uh, in the economy. That is to uh, this function or to remove the needs for commercial banks or for the payment platforms, etc. But actually, it's not. Um, the reason is uh, is that the digital cur currency will be Supplied into the uh, economy uh, and obtain to and uh, reach this general public through our banking system, through our commercial banks, and uh, this so-called two-tier uh, this two-tier system. Um, you can understand it as that uh, our commercial banking system, as well as all of this retail payment system, is uh, actually the blood vessel in our uh, that support that is within our economy uh, bodies okay well what are the uh, rmb or digital rmb they are just the blood flow in these blood vessels you can think about the commercial banks as the artery or the vein the big uh, the, the large vessels of this blood vessel system well the retail payment or the third party payment system is just the capillary uh, of this blood system a blood um, blood a vessel system or structures well the are uh, whether it is rmb or digital rmb they are just the in different type of the blood that flows in in this body so it is it is uh, and from uh, by understanding this you will be able to understand that actually uh in, Given the, uh, we, if we implement or if we supply digital RMB uh, in this economy, it will never um, be able to. We will never be able to uh, replace these blood vessels. How come? How can a blood flow uh, in the blood vessel vessels to remove the blood vessels? So that's that's not possible. 
Okay, and uh, another common misconception is that whether uh, if we uh, implement this uh, this digital RMB, will it help us to improve the efficiency of our banking system? Um, uh, the uh, idea is actually not really okay. So currently, we do have some. The frictions in terms of this transmission of the monetary policies, and this is also the reason why we have so many kind so-called innovation in terms of the monetary policy tools, like the uh, standard, the short-term lending facilities, the mid-term lending facilities, and etc. Um, but whether we can use digital RMB to improve the efficiency of this transmission in the monetary policy, uh, I don't think so. This is a different problem. How, uh, whether this blood can be circulated uh, uh, very efficiently in the body it does not depend on whether it is type A blood or type B blood. It depends on whether our vessels are uh, clean and clear for the blood to, uh, to circulate, okay? So this is the uh, third feature of the digital RMB. It will be implemented or it will be supplied in the system through this two-tier system. We are our commercial bank and the third party payment system is part of this uh, uh, supporting system okay so this is the uh, and the, in this uh, in this table I compared the CBDC versus the Bitcoin versus the digital payment. So the, on the first of, um, part is the nature of these uh, three things is that we have already understand the CBDC is the fiat money, digital uh, form of the fiat money. It is part of the money in circulation. And uh, we, we have this analog of the blood. Okay, well, the digital payment system is the structure that help us to make the payments. And it, uh, this, um, the analog is the blood vessel structures. Well, the uh, Bitcoins or any other kind of the de decentralized uh, uh, digital currency, I would only call it a token. So it, it can be used for a very limited um, uh, uh, scenarios for those people who believe in um, the value of this, uh, this digital currencies, okay? So this is, in terms of the nature, the difference between these three. And uh, the, um, the, the whether, uh, whether or, uh, any of this is the medium of change, actually only the CBDC can be served as the medium of change in, in, a global, in a general sense of the economy. Well, the Bitcoin is a medium exchange only limited within a certain amount of the players who, are, who believe in their, uh, in their uh, in, in the value world. For example, if you go to some places to play video games and you, you have this token, uh, you can use this token to uh, uh, exchange for different, uh, uh, different games to play. And then in that sense, it is a med medium exchange, but you cannot use it to buy the general goods in the economy, okay? Well, the digital payment system itself is not a medium exchange. It's just the structure for us to circulate the currencies, okay? Whether, um, whether this any of this is an investment or asset, uh, CBDC is definitely not an asset. It is a currency that it is a fiat money that help us to uh, do the transactions, help us to store the value. Well, digital payment system, of course, it's not. It's the structure for us to make the payment. Well, Bitcoin, some people says that it is a speculative asset. And uh, uh, if you believe in, uh, the, if you are really speculators and you want to, um, you think that you have this ability to predict the price uh, going up or going down, then you can use it as uh, one of your investment uh, assets. But uh, uh, from the past few days, we have seen that the prices of the Bitcoin or any other kind of the digital currency can can be very volatile and uh, a lot of people have already lost a lot. So um, if you really want to um, make uh, uh, do the transaction or so-called invest in the digital in, in this Bitcoin, uh, you have to be very, uh, first of all, you have to uh, uh, count how much of the money you can afford to lose, okay? And in one of my articles, I said, if, if the, that number does not come, uh, ends with uh, more than six zeros uh, in terms of US dollars, then you'd better consider not to uh, participate. Okay, and my another advice is, is that uh, uh, do not use leverage, do not short, um, just uh, use the money you can afford to lose to play in this market, okay? 
Well, the technology behind the CBDC and the Bitcoin and also this digital payment system are also different. So CBDC, especially China digital RMB, has this uh, double offline uh, features, which is not uh, which is not possible for the Bitcoin because um, Bitcoin and other decentralized uh, system uh, relies on this blockchain system, uh, technology and uh, it has to be online through the network. Well, the digital payment system, of course, also relies on this uh, um, uh, internet and the network. Uh, well, only the CBDC allows these offline transactions uh, where we do not have to rely on the network. Okay. Well, the CBDC is supplied by the central bank. Uh, Bitcoin is decentralized, and uh, some of the DCB, uh, some of the Bitcoin, some of the digital currency like Bitcoin has fixed limit. Well, the digital payment system is not supplied, uh, but it is provided by the financial institutions or by the certified payment providers. So this table, I think, gave a clear comparison between the uh, between the CBDC, Bitcoin, and digital payment system in terms of the nature, in terms of their function, in terms of whether they are the investment or asset, and what is the technology behind it, and then uh, who is the provider of these uh, three things. Okay, from this regard, we can see that uh, these three things are actually different things, although they have some connection or common um, common features, but uh, they are totally different, especially the CBDC and the Bitcoin or any other uh, digital currency, okay? So I just want to uh, give you some uh, some sense on how, how volatile the price can get. So this is the uh, data up till uh, April uh, uh, last month of the price of Bitcoin. So we can see that it has been growing up dramatically uh, starting from to, uh, 2020. Uh, uh, last year uh, in December, okay? And a part of the reason I think is that um, uh, although we see that uh, starting from the April or March and um, this Elon Musk's uh, tweet have plays an important role in, in pumping up the price. But uh, another thing that we have to realize it, in 2020, uh, due to this uh, shutdown of the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of the transactions that were has to be done through the cash. Um, we can see that in the gray market or black market, some a lot of these transactions that has been uh, has to go the physically exchange, exchange of the physical bills and coins uh, are shut down due to this COVID nineteen shutdown. So I think a part of the reason drives up this uh, this uh, this movement is due to these needs uh, the needs in the black market or gray market. Okay. And uh, if we compare that price driving up with the tulip mania in the 17th century, we can see a very similar pattern. And this is the price of a one tulip bulb, uh, tulip bulb uh, in Holland in the 19 uh, in the 17th century. And at that time, at the peak value of this tulip bulb, uh, it is uh, 5,200 uh, guilders of uh, that is the currency unit in the Holland, uh, which is three times. Uh, were four times of a uh, paint by Rumble. So you can see that how how big, how how ridiculous is the price for that uh, for that um, in this kind of so-called uh, uh, price bubble or a uh, bubble type of the um, uh, assets. And then the price crashed uh, to the normal level in very short time period. Okay, whether we will see the price of the Bitcoin or any other digital currency to crash like this, probably not. And this is due to the nature of that. Uh, um, this is the uh, in our current. Uh, um, network in network we have always these newcomers in the in the trading and there are some some there are some people who do believe the value of the bitcoin or some kind of the market do have this need to use bitcoin or other kind of the digital currency uh, to facilitate the transactions okay so in this figure what i did is to Give you a very a simple model in finance. We call it a rational bubble model. So this model gives us uh, this this simulation. This is a simulation that simulates the price path of a certain type of asset. We call it a rational bubble asset. So this asset pays no cash. It has no fundamental value. 
But the only thing is that uh, people believes people believes that the price will go will uh, will always grow at the expected rate of R. This R is uh, is greater than one. Okay, but we also, people also knows that the price will go up with a certain probability and will crash uh, to the original level one with certain probability. And this probability is also increasing in the level of the price. So I did I did a simulation and and you can see here this is the level of the price. It can shoot up to uh, to nine uh, to a very high level. And uh, this is the the unit. I it is not showed clearly here, but it is showed clearly here. This is in logs. Okay, this in this is in logs, and this is the log level of the price. And as you can see, this is up. This is basically a uh, ten power of a uh, uh, ten uh, ten to the power of four. Okay. So as you can see here, in this type of the um, um, rational bubble type of the assets, where it doesn't have any fundamental value, like any kind of the cur uh, digital currency is, uh, as long as people believe, some people believe that the price will go up and it will grow at a certain uh, number that is bigger than one, the price can go like crazy. It can go up as much as you want, but it will also crash and then go up again and again, okay? So this is the reason why uh, the Bitcoin or any other kind of the decentralized digital currency will never be able to replace uh, US dollars or any uh, any fiat money in the, in the world, okay? And this is also the reason why there has been a lot of the world Earnings and uh, regulations are now considering on how to regulate this kind of the market because after all it looks like a big uh, casino for those of people who have who are using your own money to gamble or in this uh, big casino it is okay okay as long as you can afford the risk but uh, uh, really uh, for those financial institutions or for those fund and uh, financial intermediaries, if they are using other people, other people's money to do this gamble, then this is the area where our financial regulations has to handle, has, has to forbid, okay? So this is, I, I think this is the core issues that in terms of the how to regulating the market for the digital currency or for this uh, decentralized digital currency. The key is that uh, uh, we have to, uh, we have to ensure no financial institutions, no financial intermediaries are using the money of other people to gamble in this big casino. And uh, so let me do a quick summary uh, due to, uh, I, I think I'm already over time. Uh, so uh, in summary, uh, we have three major features of digital RMB or digital yuan. First of all, it is part of the currency in circulation or part of our M0. It is to re replace this physical form of the fiat money, and uh, which uh, and the the, uh, the money, the value of the digital RMB, same as the RMB, is guaranteed by our sovereign credit or the uh, the economic growth, economic uh, uh, strength of the uh, of China. Okay, and the major benefit uh, or uh, the benefit uh, or the um, uh, motivation for China to you to in, to uh, do the test and uh, later on to implement digital RMB is this huge cost. It can be uh, help us to save in terms of uh, supplying, um, printing, and maintaining um, all of these um, uh, physical bills and coins. Well, the second important feature is that we have this digital RMB wallet and which can uh, facilitate these uh, transactions without using any of the network. And uh, this uh, help uh, to serve the needs for this uh, uh, an, uh, anonymous uh, or anonymity uh, through the transactions. Okay, whether it is a Trojan horse uh, that uh, the uh, PBC want to use it to uh, put a, a strong surveillance on our daily life, uh, not really. Okay, so actually, uh, currently, all of the digital transactions you have been uh, using this uh, Alipay or uh, WeChat Pay, all of these are already under the oversight or, of our PBC, uh, and uh, the uh, transactions that uh, you are you are using this. Uh, if you are going to use this digital wallet, uh, RMB wallet, or currently you are using it, uh, uh, you are uh, doing these transactions through the Alipay or WeChat Pay is a very small amount, a very small percentage as the as compared with the total transactions that has been going through every year in China. So on less than 3%. OK, 
Okay, so it makes no sense for the PBC to uh, to go through all these hassles to issue uh, the RMB and trying to get uh, uh, surveillance on this tiny data, on this uh, uh, tiny small um, tiny tiny small amount of the transactions uh, through the Alipay or WeChat Pay. Okay. And uh, on, on the other hand, we do have this anonymity that uh, to ensure the true anonymity for the transactions through this double offline um, technology. And the last uh, important feature is that the digital RMB will be implemented in a system through this two tier system through the commercial banking system. And uh, so this means that uh, this will not lead to the, this uh, intermediation for the commercial banks. It will not replace the Alipay or WeChat Pay or any other third party payment system or the retail payment system. And uh, uh, it, will not, it will not help too much to improve the efficiency of the transmission of monetary policy in our system because uh, the efficiency or the transmission of the monetary policy is mainly related to whether this blood vessels itself is clean and clear. So whether there are, we can remove the frictions in our banking system. Uh, it is has it is really not matters whether the blood in that vessel is blood a, type A or type B. Okay, and lastly, whether we our aim to implement the RMB is trying to inter internationalize the RMB and to replace the USD as US dollar as the uh, global uh, currency. Um, I don't think so because uh, whether uh, our whether RMB can be internationalized does not depending on whether it is digital or not digital. It depends on whether um, the transaction or the trade between China and other part and the other part of the country, uh, uh, other part part of the uh, world has been growing. And what kind of the uh, what kind of the structure of the payment and the clearing uh, houses we can set up with the other trading partners? So this is uh, this is a separate issue or different issue uh, with related uh, that are different from this uh, digital RMB, okay? So last, uh, lastly, I want to look at, uh, I want to talk about what is the outlook. So a lot of people care, uh, ask whether um, we will see digital RMB uh, in very short time uh, future in China, actually implement using in, in China in our daily life. Um, for that, on um, another regard, I, I'm not that, um, um, it's not optimistic. So I don't see uh, in the near future, we will really see the digital RMB in our, uh, in our daily life. Um, the reason is that uh, there are a lot of potential issues and risk in terms of implementing um, the digital RMB in the, in, in the real economy. Um, the one of the concern is that this network securities and the reliability uh, is really behind these online transactions as well as the digital currencies. And uh, we also see that uh, the issues of the digital RMB involves a lot of the technology and uh, part of the technology is uh, still in, 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 in the uh, experiment. And uh, there are a lot of uh, uncertainty we don't know yet. There are a lot of potential problems we don't know yet. So it is uh, very important and necessary for us to do um, a bunch of the tests in different scenarios, and we call it stress testing. And we have to do a lot of these tests in order to get a good idea about what other possible problems could arise and how can we solve those problems. So the robust test is a must for the uh, actual uh, implementation of the digital, digital RMB. And uh, um, on that regard, I, I, do, I do think that uh, uh, our central bank is, has a clear mind about, uh, about the um, potential uh, or the schedule on how to implement the RMB. So according to the talk uh, by Mr. Li Bo, uh, our vice president of the PBC uh, in April, so he said that currently we don't have any schedule for actually implementing RMB in our system. And uh, even we are going to implement RMB in our system, the primary uh, implementation is still in, inside China, in China, not, not to going abroad. Okay, so that's uh, that's um, uh, all I want to share with you about my thought on the DRMB. Thank you.
And this is uh, some information for you to, uh, if you want to know more about banking system in China or to know more about my thoughts on digital RMB or on these uh, fintech companies, uh, etc. You can go to either go to my uh, website, my personal website, uh, and or can, you can follow my course on the uh, or this iCourse uh, 163 website. And uh, this is uh, this QR code of my WeChat blog in Chinese. Uh, you can scan the QR code to follow uh, my uh, WeChat blog. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the audience? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, Professor Li, I have a small question about like regarding um, one of the first points that you mentioned about mm -hmm. the digital currency. Um, mm -hmm. You said um, it is designed with the aim to scale the number of transactions made every day across the country. So, mm -hmm. um, like, are we? So then, are we assuming like there will be more like benefits brought by this feature of the digital currency, or like? In other words, the transactions happening now is not uh, big enough. Like, so we want more transactions in the future. So, so this is the uh, uh, currently the situation. Uh, the the uh, transaction data uh, currently how much of the transaction has been gone through uh, in the banking system and uh, along with the third party payment system. Well, uh, uh, the argument for the impro improving or scale up the transactions daily transactions is currently is that uh, in some um, in some rural part or in some uh, uh, in some uh, in some scenarios where we don't have network. Uh, these uh, transactions are, uh, has to still um, to be um, go, um, uh, complete using the uh, physical RMBs. These uh, these coins and bills, and uh, the digital RMB will help us to save the cost in terms of replacing that part of the transaction using the physical bills and coins to use the digital RMB. So that's that's uh, although we see that this uh, digital um, payment has been has been um, uh, growing a lot in the past uh, in the in the past few years, uh, but there are still some transactions that are not uh, are not digital digitalized are still going through these physical transactions. So um, that is the part where we can use the digital RMB to facilitate the transaction. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. OK, I can also ask something. Um, so I am wondering, OK, so when you say it's going to be part of M0, uh, mm -hmm. does it, and it is going to be transmitted through the banking system, through the commercial banks, does it mean that it will be treated as a form of reserve by the banks, and uh, uh, it, that then you know, for me, in in your table, which was very interesting, I would have been interested in seeing also deposits as one of the uh, things you compare, right? When you compare the uh, the digital payment system and the uh, the, the cryptocurrencies, uh, we could also think of deposits as a bank deposit. Uh, and if it will be a form of reserve, that will uh, allow the banks to expand the amount of deposits that they are issued, right? So, so that would be kind of the one question. And then another question would be, when we talk of these digital wallets, uh, are they, uh, how are they linked to the bank accounts of the people? In the sense that if these are to be these digital uh, are to be transmitted through the banks, does it mean that people need to have bank accounts, or they can simply have these digital RMB wallets, which are not linked to particular bank accounts, and thus they can use them as means of payment without uh, without going through the banking system necessarily. Uh, hi, Alexandra. These are very two, two very good questions. For the first question, so uh, the uh, digital RMB is part of M0 means that it is it will not be part of the reserve, and uh, as we can as uh, and it will also not be part of the deposits. Uh, 
So deposits is uh, um, is what is contained in the M2. Uh, where M2, uh, how how did we uh, uh, sort of um, create M2 from M0. This is through the commercial banking system. That is, uh, whenever the commercial banking system, they get um, they get this monetary base, and then uh, where they get deposit from the uh, from the uh, public, and then they can they put part of it as reserve and then lend out, and then these uh, uh, loans will again be deposited back through by some other people and into the banking system, and through this money multiplier, the M2. Can can be uh, created from M M0. Well, uh, the digital RMB, based on its position, definition or the, its, its nature defined by the Central Bank of China, it is only part of M0, which this means that uh, it will not be part of, it will only be used in terms of the payment, in terms of the transactions. It will not be part of the deposit. It will That's not be part of the deposit of the household or of the uh, corporations. So um, it will only be part of this. It will only be part of this M zero. So that's a uh, um, that's a uh, the um, my my um, uh, my thought on the first question. Well, the the second question uh, it's again uh, I I also thought about this question before. So everybody will in in the area of the digital rmb or digital currency and digital central bank uh, currency uh you still need your bank account um, the gadget or this digital rmb wallet is uh, simply works like your physical wallet where you can withdraw some of your money uh, to this digital wallet and then you can use it without any online facilities, you, without any network to make the payment uh, with another party who have who also have this digital wallet, um, uh, and you can make the payment offline. But the later on, you still need to uh, connect your digital wallet with your bank account to to check the balance and to adding or uh, with uh, or withdraw the money from this digital wallet to your bank account. So, so uh, truly, you can think about this digital RMB wallet is simply a digitalized uh, physical wallet. Yes, this this is very interesting. In particular, the first part because if it's not going to be uh, possible to use this as a reserve, uh, uh, and it will be in fact just a means of payment, uh, basic. So it will not be a mean a form of saving wealth, of storing wealth, but but really only the, the means of payment. Uh, yeah, I have to think about this more, but it feels uh, at least in some way, not in the, as you said, I completely uh, understand your point of saying that uh, this means that, uh, uh, that digital RMB will not be competing with the mobile payment system or with the banking system uh, in this uh, way, direct way as it is sometimes thought. Uh, but wouldn't you say that there will be some at least, if not competition, there will be several options for making a payment, right? If you are a, an individual, you could be making a payment using your bank account and your uh, uh, your deposit on, the, on your bank account. You could be using uh, 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 potentially some form of credit uh, and you could be using the digital RMB. And uh, this is uh, right? the... From my point of view is that uh, uh, you, uh, you 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 are making a payment using different account. So this is all all of these are like the structure. So your digital RMB wallet is simply like your additional uh, bank account, so parallel to all of your banking account or your credit card or uh, your your Alipay account or your WeChat account. All of these are just the different account you can have. A person can have a several banking accounts, uh, account with uh, associated with uh, CCB, with ICBC, mm -hmm. with POC, and also with Alipay account, with uh, WeChat account. And the digital RMB itself is not a account, but digital RMB wallet is can be think about as a additional account that you can have. Well, this digital RMB wallet facilitate uh, the need for you to do this transaction without any uh, tracing, without any uh, network. So this allows you to make the payment for the smaller amount of the transactions, maintain your anonymous uh, status in these transactions. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is very helpful. I'll have just one last question and then 
if we have some more, it would be great uh, to hear other people. Um, finally, so you would say that in no way would this uh, digital RMB potentially be used to uh, perform uh, helicopter money functions, as we call, right? Where we basically, uh, uh, if we have a problem that people are not necessarily uh, spending their money or that the uh, monetary policy transmission mechanism is uh, uh, is facing a big uh, uh, um, friction or generally banks are not willing to uh, uh, are, are taking on currency but are putting them as a reserve and not not willing to to extend uh, uh, means of payment to to their clients so you wouldn't say that central bank would gain a, a, a capacity to, in fact, directly go to the citizens through these wallets if needed. Uh, for example, in a case like a pandemic or something like this. So my understanding is that uh, the key issue in terms of the transmission of the monetary policy is not on how much of the M0 you can increase in this economy or you can withdraw from the economy. It is mainly related to this, uh, um, how much of the credit you can supply in this economy through yes. the loans or through, the, uh, through other form of the financing. And uh, uh, given the given the position of the digital RMB, it is mainly in this M0, it is not in the M2. So uh, this is the reason or uh, the argument I, I have for why it is not possible uh, for the uh, digital RMB to, uh, to, be, to be very helpful in terms of improve the efficiency uh, of this uh, uh, monetary policy and uh, transmission, because it will it will only be part of this, um, how much, uh, suppose you get a red packet from the central bank, uh, central, central bank uh, through one of your uh, commercial bank account yes. or through your Alipay account. Then uh, the only things you can do, deal, you can do with this digital RMB is that you, 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 you can either keep in your digital wallet where you spend it to buy some goods or services. And if you, you will not be able to save it and earn some interest, and then this, uh, um, then the central bank will be able to use your deposit to make another loans and then to implement uh, or to right. in, uh, stimulate these economic um, activities. So that's uh, that's 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 the I think that's a reasonable way of using the digital RMB because we really don't uh, because this uh, this digitalization form of the um, currency fiat money uh, is not that easy uh, to uh, there are a lot of potential issues regarding this uh, online technology or this digital technology and I, I, I don't think any central bank can afford these um, potential problems of, mm -hmm. of using this one as a amplifiers or as a multi, um, money multipliers in the economy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really help us to reduce this information asymmetry or uh, to help us to see through how is this mon monetary policy conducted. I, I think it will add more more information asymmetry than to reduce the information asymmetry in term on this regard. Right. Thank you, Nan. Uh, I think we have a question. We want Diana to take over in the chat, and maybe if people have questions, they could also raise yeah. hands. Yeah, so there is a question from the chat box. So will salary, uh, and this is from Vienna, uh, will salaries be paid in digital RMB? How else can people get digital RMB beyond um, being red packets? So as I had uh, said before in the, at the beginning, um, currently all, all of this current digital RMB is still in the internal test. So in the internal test, this, is, this digital RMB is given out uh, through several scenarios. Uh, first scenario is that through this red packet that uh, it will show up in your digital wallet. And there are uh, a scenario where this, uh, um, I think the doctors and nurses in one of this uh, uh, hospital, they get some, uh, some payment through their digital wallet and they can use that, um, and you can call it as part of their salary and they can use this money to buy the food at the canteen of that, uh, of that hospital. So uh, uh, eventually, the salary can be paid in can be paid in digital RMB. You, you, you just think about it as RMB. It is simply digital form RMB. For example, currently my salary is paid 
uh, I didn't see the bills and the coins for my salary. All, all the money is already automatically uh, adding to my bank account uh, that associated with my uh, university. So on this regard, you, you say, is it a digital arm fee? In some sense, I would say it is digital arm fee. It's just technology is a little bit different, but uh, it is digital form the RMB. I never see the physical ones. So that's uh, that's that's my understanding about this uh, uh, digital RMB. But uh, currently, um, this uh, in in the in this in theory, all of uh, whenever in, in the scenarios you are using the RMB for the transactions for the exchange of the goods and services, all of this part of the RMB can be digitalized. It can be using we we can use digital RMB to do it. Okay. Uh, it's just now uh, there are a lot of the issues or potential for unforeseenable uh, uncertainties within the technology of using digital RMB. So that's why all of these tests is still uh, internal test uh, in the closed system. Sure. Hi, Professor. Hi, thank you. Yeah. Hi. Uh, can I ask a question? Is this there still yeah, time? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Hi. Um, I have a question about the Trojan horse. Trojan horse misconception. I think that's a lot of the Western media are worried about at the moment. They're kind of, you know, especially they said that they're cracking down, you know, on the Bitcoin. So to pave way for the digital currency, digital yuan, that's what they're saying now, which of course I think that's not true. But just to counter that argument, if I would understand this correctly, is that people can do transactions anonymously, but if these digital wallets are still tied to a person, a person's account. That means you know how much money you know my wealth can still be tracked down, right? Instead of just like transactions, is that am I correct or? You are correct, but you just forget the 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 the, the one of the data is that currently your wealth is already trackable by any <laughs> uh, theoretically by any central bank. So all of your money in your current banking account theoretically can be traced. Uh, by um, by the um, by the uh, 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 commercial banks uh, that uh, who who gave you the account, and then the central bank of that who oversight who, who regulate this uh, commercial bank will be able to see through all of your information already. Okay, and so then, so all of these yeah. transactions yeah. are currently already um, under the under the regulation of the central bank. Yeah, I get that, but the I thing is, for China, example, like. Not China, but also in in the countries all over the world. Yeah, I mean, my question is probably like I think it's not really really relevant for China per se because I think many countries, you know, some small street vendors, they can't sometimes they evade taxes by using cash only. You know what I mean? So if they had that alternative before, you know, to only accept cash and not paying enough taxes, now would they worry about that? Like if everything's yeah. centralized. So this should this this part of the people are the one that should really worry about digital RMB <laughs> because uh, um, uh, even we have this digital RMB wallet, then there is a certain amount of the limit that you can use this one this gadget as to uh, do the transactions. Um, but uh, suppose you want to use the cash to evade tax, or to do money laundering, or to uh, to pay the ransom, or to to collect the ransom, or to uh, to uh, to transact in this gray market uh, like drugs or other kind of the market, you don't want you don't really want anybody to see through it, these transactions. You have to use cash. And suppose every country uh, in the world are now using the digital cash, digital form of the uh, currencies, then these people are really worried. So this is also the reason why I, I, I was arguing that we see this uh, huge rise up in the Bitcoin price. And I do think part of this rising up is due to the uh, fact that during this COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of the cash transactions was not uh, feasible for those kind of the people. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I do I I did hear some stories that uh, uh, companies in some um, in some countries cannot uh, transfer their profit back to their home country and they have to use Bitcoin. So this is this is part of the reason driving this uh, uh, rising up of the price of the Bitcoin. Wow. 
because th this kind of the needs to facilitate the transactions that uh, has to be uh, they they want they, they cannot uh, they cannot uh, do it using the uh, fiat money using the using the, uh, the the banking system of the different countries and uh, worth for those cash transactions they have to use it cash and but they cannot do it now uh, they are now trying to use bitcoin but a lot, a lot of these kind of the, the transactions are related to the illegal transactions, money laundering, drug dealers, and etc. So this is also the reason why uh, the, uh, the 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 um, uh, yeah, Janet Yellen, the Secretary of the uh, Treasury, as well as the uh, European Central Bank uh, bankers, uh, Christine Lagarde, were saying that uh, the only the the, only, the the there is a huge potential problem related to the money laundering and the, and the, uh, ransom collecting regarding this Bitcoin. And I don't know whether you have heard this news or not. Um, just a few weeks ago. The pipeline, uh, oil pipeline in the U.S. was uh, was hacked by a, a hacker, and uh, the ransom was asked for in form of the uh, uh, critical currency. Yeah, uh, can I ask one last question? Yeah, sure. Sorry. Um, so, do you think the transactions will be bounded by, for example, national borders? For example, if someone trying to okay, I'm thinking mostly about money laundering. If they're, for example, smuggling, I don't know, 10, I don't know, like these little machines that contain a lot of cash to a foreign country and they start to do business there in Chinese currency overseas, how do they prevent it? Like, is are there any trackers to prevent this? You know, before if people want to like, you know, transfer money really in cash to other countries without paying taxes or, you know, just do money laundering. And the, basically the customs people can see that, okay, what is in your bag, they can find it. But now everything is hidden, for example, like on an app or wallet or just a little machines. How could they detect that? Just not to let the money flow out of the country. So uh, with the digital currency or digital RMB, uh, this is much easier to, it's much, much more, uh, much easier to detect all kinds of this uh, money laundering or cross-border uh, trafficking of the, of the, of the, of the money. Because um, theoretically, uh, any large amount of the transfers or the uh, uh, money uh, transactions are can be can be easily detected through this uh, digital network, so that's the, that's 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 the reason why uh, I just said that for those people who really want to use a large amount of the cash tran transactions, those are the people who really worried, because if they have to if if, if they have to use the digital RMB to do these large transactions, then uh, it is uh, it can be detected in, in a minute in a system. And uh, based on this uh, uh, technology behind the digital currency, uh, this uh, small gadget uh, is only has a very small limit, like a 200 amount, a 200 200 RMB, or uh, at most 500 RMB. You can imagine if they want to uh, 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 transfer one billion, how many gadgets they have to carry? It will be much easier to detect this uh, versus the cash, right? Yeah, I thought I thought the limit was like two thousand at least, but if it's like two hundred, then there's nothing to worry about. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Even two thousand, you 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 will need to carry a lot of the gadget, right? Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any more questions? Okay, I guess there's no more questions and uh, you are always welcome to send me emails and my, you can find my email from my personal website or uh, at ITAN College. And again, if you are interested in, in some of the articles, you can always go to my uh, WeChat blog. Uh, if you can read it Chinese or you can go to my personal website. Okay, thank you very much for uh, joining me uh, tonight and uh, I, had, I enjoyed our talk, thank you. Thank you, Professor Lee. Yeah, so um, we will uh, end the recording now, I guess. We'll mm -hmm. upload the recording.